Hey, Salvador Brigham here. Today I want to talk about how Indiegogo works. I'll be going in depth through how Indiegogo works and also be more current and updated. That is what I'm covering on today's YouTube video. This is the crowdfunding demystified YouTube channel. On this channel we talk about everything crowdfunding. I hope you enjoy today's video. It's coming up right after this. Okay, so again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Um, I've been writing about crowdfunding since 2012. I started a podcast in 2015, more than 200 episodes out there called the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. You put my name in, Salvador Brigman, you can probably find the podcast. I also have a book out there called the Kickstarter Launch Formula. I've actually written nine other books as well. And we have this YouTube channel, Crowdfunding Demystified, where I share content about crowdfunding. So kind of what I wanna do today is to make this super simple for you. How does Indiegogo work? And obviously, if you're thinking about this, you probably thought a little bit about Kickstarter as well. So how does Indiegogo work? First of all, Indiegogo is a crowdfunding website. And the way you use it is you're trying to raise money for a specific goal. So let's just say that you've created a new technology gadget, or you have a new business, e-commerce product of some kind, and you wanna raise money in order to fulfill a minimum order quantity that you gotta hit in order to get your factory to produce this product. So we say, okay, I'm going to raise, I'm going to, hit, I'm going to set a $30,000 goal on Indiegogo. And what you can do when you set that goal is you can decide, okay, am I going to set an all or nothing goal or am I going to set a flexible funding goal? Now, I know that sounds kind of complicated, so just stay with me. I'm going to unpack that a little bit. This determines everything. When you have an all or nothing fundraising goal, this is the same as what Kickstarter allows you to do. Kickstarter is only all or nothing. What that means is if you set a $30,000 goal on Indiegogo, you have to hit or exceed that amount. Otherwise, the people who have backed your campaign will not have their credit cards be charged. Essentially, all the money is returned to your potential customers. They're all returned to these pre-orders, if you wanna call it that. They're returned to your backers, and that's really kind of the term you use, is they're returned to your backers. So if you set a $30,000 goal, if you don't hit it or you don't exceed it, you won't be able to keep the funds that you've raised at the end of the duration of your campaign. Every campaign on Indiegogo has not only a fundraising goal, it also has a fundraising duration, which is typically around 30 days. It could be as long as 60 days or 45 days around there, but typically it's about 30 days long. On the flip side, Indiegogo allows you to have what's called a flexible funding goal. A flexible funding goal says that if we set a $30,000 goal, you don't necessarily have to hit that in order to keep the money that's been raised. Now, what does that mean? That means, let's just say you set a $30,000 goal, you only raise $15,000, you still get to keep that money and use that for the production of your product or use that for whatever it is that you're trying to do, use that for marketing, et cetera. That's called flexible funding. So first of all, on Indiegogo, you can do what's called fixed funding or all or nothing funding or flexible funding. The one allows you, you have got to hit or exceed your goal. The other, you can raise as much as you want or as little as you want, and you'll be able to keep the money. Why the difference, right? Why not just always do flexible? The reason is that a lot of the times backers might be a little bit skeptical about whether or not you can actually deliver on your promises. So if I come to you and I say, hey, you know, I need to raise $30,000 to be able to produce this product. Um, that's what the quote the manufacturer gave me. If you give me, if we raise $30,000, I'll be able to make this product. What happens if you with that promise only raise $15,000? Well, you gotta come up with an extra 15K to be able to ship out the products to your customers, right? And what if you're not able to? Or what if there's something that's a roadblock? Well, your customers then are never going to get the actual product. So a lot of the times, um, creators, I suggest them to do all or nothing or to use Kickstarter um, because they need to hit a certain amount to give backers confidence that they're going to deliver on their product. Now, other people are already in the production stage or very close to it, or they don't need extra funding or cash to be able to actually produce this product. And for them, raising money is nice, but it's also a bit of validation in that way uh, and customer market fit, right? And using Indiegogo as a mechanism to get brand exposure and brand awareness, et cetera. So you might not go with flexible funding if you absolutely need, let's just say, this amount of money to be able to ship out products to your customers and there's no other way for you to get those funds. When people support you, when they back your campaign on Indiegogo, 
you essentially are saying to them, hey, if you back this reward, you back this campaign, I'm going to give you a pre-order of the product. And that kind of leads us into what I wanna talk about next. So the next hallmark of every Indiegogo campaign is that every campaign has what are called perks or rewards. There's sort of two words for them, perks or rewards. And what those are, are when someone has backed your campaign, they can choose one of these depending on the amount that they support you at. And typically, the actual product, it's almost a pre-order of the product, is listed at one of these amounts. So if you invented you know, a new pair of headphones, and let's just say you're selling the headphones for $200, if someone backs the campaign at $200, if they want to, they can claim one of these rewards. And all that is, it's almost kind of, it's kind of like a voucher, honestly, but basically it's a transaction that happens and it's a pre-order where you are saying, okay, we're gonna ship out these headphones to you, but we're gonna ship it out in three months time, right? We're gonna ship it out in two months time or four months time, you know, depending on when you, the, the production schedule is. So basically you supporting the campaign now and we are going to support, we're going to ship this product out to you in the future. Now to kind of expand on rewards, Every reward doesn't necessarily have to be a pre-order of the product. You could say, hey, we're gonna give you a set of headphones and we're also gonna engrave your name, right, on the side of the headphones. You're gonna get a set of headphones and you're also gonna get a nice case that the headphones go in. Or you're gonna get a set of headphones and maybe an MP3 flash drive with some of my favorite music on it, right? You can sort of pick and patch or mix and match, I guess is the word I'm looking for, um, different rewards and bundle them into one reward tier. And this is one of the ways that in my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, and also on my coaching calls, I encourage students to up the ante when it comes to the amount that people are giving. So let's just say you created a product that's 25 bucks, right? You know, that's, that's an average amount, but how can we make people support your project at the $50 tier? Well, the only way we can do that is to add more value to the reward tiers. So maybe you've invented a watch, right? So let's just say people are backing it at, just for this example, $25, which is kind of like a cheaper end watch, but let's just say 25 bucks. How could we get them to support your campaign at the $50 level and claim a $50 reward? Well, maybe they not only get the watch, but they also get a repair kit. They get extra links for the watch. They get a, a nice, an extra band for the watch, maybe a lifetime guarantee, or they get two watches, right? So you can, you can create bundles on Indiegogo of different items that are a part of that actual reward tier. So that way someone comes to the page and they see, look, if I pledge $50, not only do I get a watch, I get all this other stuff. And that's really the secret or one of the secrets, if you will, to crowdfunding and to get people to support at $500 tier or $200 tier is you bundle lots of value into those tiers. So we talked about fi uh, fixed versus flexible funding. We talked about the need for a fundraising duration. We talked about the need for a fundraising goal and also perks, which are what people get when they support your campaign. Let's talk about some of the other things that come with Indiegogo and sort of how it works. Indiegogo is a marketplace, very similar to Amazon, very similar to Kickstarter, similar to Etsy, et cetera. In a marketplace, you have buyers and sellers. And the cool thing about Indiegogo is you have people who are regularly backing projects on that actual website and people can stumble on your campaign or they can get the Indiegogo newsletter or they can see it tweeted out somewhere or shared socially and this is an opportunity for you to get in front of strangers people that you've never met before in person that will discover you online much in the way that they might discover or stumble on an e-commerce website like Shopify but instead they're stumbling on your campaign page and they're doing that from the marketplace in Indiegogo or the Indiegogo platform if you want to call it because the way it works is not only does funding, you know, funding for this come from people that you're sending to the page from your own network or from the marketing that you're doing, they can also discover this from the Indiegogo search algorithm itself. They can discover it from the actual platform. They can discover it from trending projects. They might discover it from a mention or, you know, you're, you're mentioning the newsletter, for example. There are many ways for people to discover your project. And this is why people are launching Indiegogo campaigns is because it's not just about 
about getting your friends and family to support it. It's also about reaching out to a larger network or a larger group of people. This YouTube video is sponsored by The Gadget Flow. The Gadget Flow reaches over 28 million people and they've been around since 2012. They're Indiegogo and Kickstarter experts. They featured over 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns. If you have a tech or design campaign, it is a great platform to generate awareness and get backers. Check them out at thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. So I know what you're thinking. The question is like, how do you do that, right? <laughs> how do you actually get strangers to support your campaign? And that's kind of what I based my entire career on, to be honest, um, is not only teaching about that, but also doing that for people is running marketing and helping them from a coaching angle or producing products and online courses on that. Um, so it's a very you know complicated process, but I can boil it down to something very simple and actionable that you can take away in this video. So what I'll say is that you need to create social proof around your campaign. And what does that mean? That means that you need to get a little bit of funding in the gate, kind of prime the pump essentially before other people and strangers get interested in your project. So you ask yourself like, why would a stranger support my campaign? It's because they're drawn to the campaign when they see other people that are supporting it. And they're like, huh, this looks kind of interesting. They watch the video on the campaign. Every campaign on Indiegogo, most of them have a video. I'd say like 95% of them have a video, a pitch video that people can watch. And on that pitch video, you show people using the product, you talk about the major benefits, maybe you have a big promise, like if you buy these headphones, you'll never have to buy another pair of headphones again, or it's so comfortable, it'll fit with you really nicely when you're going on runs or whether you're going to a business meeting, this pair of headphones is adorable, you can hear your music at super high quality, it's also very comfortable, you can literally use these headphones to silence out um, people when you're on a phone, uh, sorry, on the plane, or you can silence people when you're trying to, I don't know, do your meditation in the morning, right? So you try to create a pitch using the video. You also expand on that pitch in the actual campaign text, in the actual Indigo campaign. And typically you also have high resolution graphics and photos and that kind of stuff that you insert into the campaign page. And what that does is it creates this really nice looking, well-designed page when people come to it and they see other people have supported it, it's nearing towards its trending trajectory, its trending funding goal, People get excited, they watch the video, and that's an invitation for you to almost influence them to become a backer of your project. Getting back to our topic of like how Indiegogo works, um, the, the thing that I think a lot of people don't recognize first when they're just starting is that just because you set a $30,000 goal doesn't mean that's the amount of money you're gonna raise. And by that I mean, let's just say you set a $30,000 goal and you wake up you know, the next morning and you check your phone and you're like, what are all these notifications coming from? And you check your, your website, your Indiegogo campaign page, and you're like, wow, we blew past the goal. You know, We ended up raising $40,000. Or you check back in a couple of days, and you're like, oh my gosh, we're at 40K. Or I've had people who literally get to you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars with their Indiegogo campaign, and that's over the amount that they originally set for their fundraising goal. So the thing about Indiegogo is just because you set a goal doesn't mean that the funding stops there. You can go 10x, you know, you can go 5x, you go 15x. Um, it's really about the virality of the campaign, how much popularity it's able to maintain and also your marketing in general. If you know what you're doing with your marketing, you can easily get an overfunded campaign. Um, and you'll notice this across the platforms. You're not just Indiegogo, also Kickstarter. Um, also other kinds of crowdfunding campaign platforms that are out there. Most of these campaigns are going to be overfunded and that's by design. So the way that I work with clients is we have an internal funding goal, which is kind of like secretly how much we want to raise. And we have an external funding goal, which is what the world sees. So these could be coaching clients I have. These could be clients that I'm working on with their projects. It could really be students, people who have enrolled in my online courses, etc. We have an internal funding goal, and then we have an external funding goal. So let's just say you have set an external goal of $20,000, and you have an internal goal of more like 50K, right? So you're doing activities and engaged in marketing in order to hit a 50K goal, but externally with the actual campaign, it says 20K is the fundraising goal. So that's just a little bit of a tidbit 
that you should know about how Indiegogo works. The final thing I wanna leave you with when it comes to an Indiegogo campaign, and there's so much functionality I'm leaving out, man. Like we could be talking about referral marketing, we could be talking about having a secret perk, you know, we can talk about featured perks, or Facebook retargeting, like there's a lot of stuff that comes with Indiegogo. So I invite you to go and check out some of the other videos that I got out there on Indiegogo. But um, I'll leave you with one final point and that Indiegogo is special for this reason. Indiegogo is special because you can enter what's called an in-demand program. And what does that mean? An Indiegogo in-demand program happens after you've done your entire fundraising campaign. So let's just say you have a 30-day campaign. After the campaign is finished, let's just say you surpassed your goal by a factor of 2x. So you had a 30K goal, you end up raising 60K, 30 days, you're happy, right? Well, now there's this thing called an in-demand program where you can go into the in-demand program and what it allows you to do is keep raising funds after the project has been completed. So it's almost like you, you run the campaign and then if you opt into Indiegogo in demand, you can actually use the Indiegogo campaign as kind of like a Shopify store where you're continuing to collect orders even though the campaign has finished. What this is incredible for is if you've maintained a ton of freaking momentum and you got captured that towards the end of the campaign, you can maintain that momentum for longer than the actual duration. So if you go into Indiegogo in demand, you're continuing to capitalize on that momentum, right? People are continuing to support you. So your, your funding will actually go up. I've seen campaigns that literally double their funding by going into Indiegogo in demand. And the other cool thing is that it's almost like an alternative to just having a Shopify store. If you don't wanna set up a whole Shopify store all now, you can just go into Indiegogo in demand and you can keep processing orders using the Indiegogo page. Now there's another cool thing here that you might not know about, but a lot of Kickstarter campaigns will actually go into Indiegogo in demand. I know it's really sneaky, right? So if someone has a successful Kickstarter campaign and then they're like, you know what? I wanna keep raising money. I'm gonna go into Indiegogo in demand and Indiegogo allows you to do this. Now there is an extra fee if you decide to port over from another platform. So it's around 8%, I believe, if you port over from Kickstarter. But a lot of campaigns you see on Indiegogo in demand, if you actually look at the small text underneath their funding, it will say they raised this amount on another platform. And what that means is they came from Kickstarter or another site, port it over to Indiegogo in demand and continue to raise funds there. And that might be something that you might not know about. Okay, so we covered a lot in this video. Um, if there, you think there's other stuff that you don't know about yet, and rather than watching hours and hours of my videos or reading my entire book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, or going through my online courses, right? You don't wanna do all of that. You just kinda of want like something speedy. You really value your time and efficiency and you want someone who knows what they're talking about. You can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. This is an intensive hour-long call. I promise you, you will save a ton of money when you book a coaching call with me when it comes to service providers. I can give you the inside scoop on everyone in this industry, I can tell you about the tools you should be using, I tell you about the strategy, it does not matter what stage you are at. And also, if you wanna explore the option of having someone like myself or another company taking over the marketing for your campaign and the managing of it, we can also discuss that on that particular coaching call. It's really for there for you to make sure, it's, it's really an individual call so that even if you're not interested in going towards a next step of some kind, whether enrolling in an, a longer term coaching program with me or anything like that, is designed to be helpful and useful in and of itself. So it's really designed for everyone in that way. If you're interested, book it down below, link down below or crowdcrux.com slash coaching will take you there. But again, my name is Salvador Brigman. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. It's, it's, it's a lot of work to make videos for you guys, but I do enjoy it and love it. So leave a comment down below if you kind of want to give me a pat on the back and you, you took some value away from this. It really encourages me. It motivates me. It gets me excited to put out more content for you and subscribe if you want access to that future content. Again, my name is Sal and I will see you next time.